It's Terry Sweeney from Light Reading, and we're back at MEF 19 in downtown Los Angeles. I'm delighted to be joined by Dan Pitt, Senior Vice President of MEF. Dan, appreciate you taking some time to talk to us. It's my pleasure. It's always enjoyed. Uh, let's let's start with uh, the the big news here. Um, what's what's happening with uh, MEF 3.0? Lots of updates. Lots of lots of big breakthroughs there. There's there's a lot to MEF 3.0. You know, we have the four quadrants of you know, services, LSO, you know, APIs, uh, certification, and community. And there's growth and development in all of them. We've had a number of announcements this week about that, about letter ballots approved for carrier ethernet, service OAM, uh, SD-WAN, certification, professional. These are all evidence that a large community of MEF members and contributors are doing the work under the umbrella of MEF 3.0. All right, well, bravo. Um... In, in lockstep with that, I imagine there's also steps that you're taking to encourage carriers and service providers to ad adopt more of the capability sets that are available there. Can, can you talk a bit about some of those efforts? Yeah, I would characterize it a little differently. It's not like we're convincing them, they're convincing themselves and each other. Okay. Um, we had a, an amazing discussion on the board meeting yesterday morning we got to get this community involved. We got to get these people signed up. They got to adopt Sonata. We have to have the whole community, the whole world, buy into the Sonata. Let's go out and get some of our colleagues to do this. Mm -hmm. um, what we've done is taken the requirements we have from our members and from their customers to come up with the constructs that they build. You know, the work is done by, by these volunteers. We're 12 people in MEF. Um, and we've structured the work so it gets done quickly and efficiently and toward realizable commercial implementation and deployment. And, and the more benefit it has among those who tried it, showed it at the POCs among other places, uh, the more people say, gee, I want to do that, I have to do that, I can do that. All right, is there, is there something in addition to Sonata that's a, like a, a, a tangible outgrowth of, of, of this? I'm, I'm just curious from your perspective um, about the milestones that um, you guys are basically celebrating here at the MEF 19 event. So that, the important thing about Sonata, and we're building out the many different components within Sonata, is specifications and SDKs, um, is that it enables automated interoperator federation of services for you know, global connectivity requirements and service requirements of their enterprise customers. So that's really significant because you can federate services between operators, but it takes three to six months to set up. You can see in some of these demos, they can do it in three to six minutes. Wow. And take it up, take it down, pay for it. Um, so that's been really significant, but we have also helped them in the North-South APIs and those abstracted constructs to free them up to choose their solution technology um, according to what they need, what they can afford, what they're ready for. So traditional, new stuff, SDN, NFV, SD-WAN. Okay. Dan, talk a little bit about how open networking is helping really foster and encourage intercarrier connectivity. I think most of what inter, uh, of open networking has done for the operator community, the carriers in general, is to allow them to build out software that governs operation over a variety of transports, because it used to be service and transport specific. Right. That has freed them up to create new services and to automate their services and the interoperator services. So all the automation stuff comes from being able to implement SDN and NFP. Okay, this, this may be itself obvious, but what, what's, what's the business benefit of, of, of making that more seamless and transparent? So there are two. One is uh, more efficient operation and sure. faster time, shorter time to revenue, frankly. And the other, and that's what they've been building on so far. But after that, we're going to have new services, new sources of revenue, new applications. I mean, these are the things you hear about, also things we haven't thought of yet, uh, that will give them really new life to their business, not just preserve their current business. All right. Um, Dan, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. Terry, it's always a pleasure.